All right, for this project, we are going to need, first we'll need some darning needles. This will help sew in all of our loose ends. It is possible to weave in all the ends without darning needles, but they do make it, in my opinion, much easier to do. You'll need some markers. Um, four of them we will need. You don't need anything fancy for a marker. You can also use a scrap piece of yarn as a marker. It's just something to mark where you're at inside of your pattern. We'll need our crochet hook. We'll be needing a four millimeter hook for this project. You'll need a pair of scissors. And then we'll need four different color yarns. I am using sugar and cream. These are a number four weight cotton yarn. Colors I have picked is hot pink, sea breeze, yellow, and hot purple. Now I prefer using a cotton yarn because for these, you know, you could use them for either um, a pot holder. Um, so, you know, especially with the uh, Easter coming up, I wanted some nice spring colors to show off for that. I really don't trust putting, you know, a hot pot, you know, especially at your know, Easter dinner, onto something made with like acrylic yarn. So I prefer always using the cotton yarn for that, especially since I use a lot of cast iron pans. So I feel much more comfortable using 100% cotton. All right, and now to begin this project, what we wanna do is select what's gonna be your first color. Now, I think I'm gonna start with the yellow. So we're going to start and make a magic ring. So essentially, just wrap around so that your working end is over the top of your tail end. Take a crochet hook. Pull a loop up through the circle, and then just do a simple slip stitch to secure the ring. Now, for our first round of this color, you want to chain one, and then you want to single crochet into the circle. Then you want to do a half double crochet. So yarn over into the circle, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three loops. And then you wanna do two double crochets. So yarn over into the circle and pull up a loop, yarn over, go through your first two loops, yarn over and go through your last two loops. And then go ahead and repeat that. All right, and then, because that's all we're doing for our first round for the first color, take your marker, pull out your hook, and just put the marker right onto that uh, loop. Now, we take our second color, create your slip knot, Now with our second color, we want to attach it right next to our first color. Let's just go ahead and do a slip stitch to attach. All right, and then just like with our first color, want to do a chain one and then a single crochet into the circle and then a half double crochet into the circle and then two double crochets. And then you have your little loop, place your marker, pull out your hook, put your marker into that stitch. All right, now you have your first two colors. All 
Now we'll go ahead and attach our third color. Just go ahead and make your slip knot. And we'll attach that into the ring. And we'll go ahead and chain one. And then just like the last two, you want to do a single crochet. And then a half double crochet. and then two double crochets. And pull up your loop and place your marker into that stitch. Now we have three colors attached. We want to take our fourth color and go ahead and create your slip knot. And we will attach our fourth color into the ring. And then we'll chain one and then do a single crochet, a half double crochet, and then two double crochets. Move your hook and place your marker into that last stitch. And then you'll want to just take the tail of your magic circle and pull it all tight. And now here we have, this is our first round of our spiral. Now always remember what your first color was. So we started on this one with our yellow. All right, now for our second round, we wanna start with our first color. So go ahead and remove your marker and insert your hook. Now we wanna look at the second color We'll see, we got one, two, three, four. And if you pull them apart, there was our first chain one. We want to ignore that first chain one. And we want to put two double crochets into that single crochet stitch. And then into the next stitch, we want to put one double crochet. And then into the third stitch, we want to put two double crochets. Go ahead, pull your hook out, replace your marker. And then go to your next color, which mine is the hot pink. And once again, see your stitches and into your single crochet stitch, you want to do two double crochets. And then into the next stitch, which is the half double crochet stitch or the first, 
yeah, half double crochet stitch, which is one double crochet into there. And then into your first double crochet stitch, you want to do two double crochets. And then replace your marker. Then you move on to the next color, which mine is the hot purple. And again, into the single crochet stitch, you want two double crochets. And then one double crochet into the next stitch. And then two double crochets into the next stitch. Then put your marker back into there. Now into our fourth color, remove our marker, place our hook, and the same with the last stitches. We want to into your first stitch, one or two double crochets, then one double crochet, and then two double crochets. And if your magic circle starts to come loose, go ahead and just pull the tail because we are working a little tight into there, especially with the first round. Or excuse me, the second round. And there we have our round two. All right, now for our third round, we're going to start again with our first color. Now into the next stitch here, we want to put two double crochets. And then into the next three stitches, we want to put one double crochet. And then into the next stitch, we want two double crochets. Go ahead and replace your marker. And if you notice, you stop the stitch right before where the marker is coming out of for each row. So you go ahead and repeat that for each stitch, two double crochets, and then three double crochets into the, <laughs> your first stitch is two double crochets into the next stitch, and then one double crochet into the next three stitches, and then two double crochets into the next stitch. And go ahead and repeat that for each color around. All right, now that we've completed that round, for our next round, this will be round four. Start with our first color. And for this one, we start do two double crochets into the next stitch. And then one double crochet into the next five stitches.
and then into the next stitch, two double crochets. Then you want to repeat that for each color of the round. So it is into the first stitch of the round, two double crochets into the first stitch, then one double crochet into the next five stitches, and then two double crochets into the next stitch. All right, now for our fifth round, we're going to start again on our first color. And we want to do two double crochets into the first stitch. And then we wanna do one double crochet into the next seven stitches. And then into the next stitch, two double crochets. All right. So you're just going to repeat that for each color all the way around. Two double crochets into the first stitch one double crochet into the next seven stitches and then into the next stitch two double crochets and just repeat that for each color All right, now that we've completed our fifth round for our sixth round, start at our first color. And what we wanna do is two double crochets into the next stitch. And then into the next nine stitches, we wanna do one double crochet And then into our next stitch, we want to put two double crochets. All right, so for this round, what we want to do is repeat that for each color, which was two double crochets into the first stitch and then one double crochet into the next nine stitches, and then two double crochets into the next stitch, and go ahead and repeat that for each color of the round. All right, now that we've just completed row six, now we want to do round seven. So for this one, we want to do two 
double crochets into our first stitch. Then we want to do one double crochet into the next 11 stitches. And then you want to do two double crochets into the next stitch. So now with each of your four colors, you want to repeat this. So it's two double crochets into your first stitch one double crochet into the next 11 stitches and then two double crochets into the last stitch. All right, so now we've completed row seven, so we wanna start round eight. So with our first color, what we're wanting to do is do two double crochets into our first stitch, and then one double crochet into the next 13 stitches. And then you want to, into the last stitch, put two double crochets. So now for round eight, we want to repeat that for each color, which again, it's two double crochets into the first stitch, and then one double crochet into the next 13 stitches, and then two double crochets into the last stitch. All right, now that we've completed row eight, we want to go ahead and start round number nine. So to start off, we want to do two double crochets into our first stitch. And then we want to do one double crochet into the next 15 stitches.
And then into your last stitch, you want to do two double crochets. All right, so you just want to repeat that for each of the colors of the round. So you want to do two double crochets into your first stitch, then one double crochet into the next 15 stitches, and then into your last stitch, you want to put two double crochets. All right, now that we have completed our ninth round, what we want to do is come to the beginning here. And now we want to do into our next stitch a half double crochet, then into the next stitch a single crochet, and into our third stitch place a slip knot. All right, and then go ahead and tie off. I like to leave the ends kind of long so it makes it a little easier to get the yarn to weave in later. I'd rather have too much and snip off a little extra than not enough. But go ahead with each color into your first stitch do a half double crochet, the next stitch a single crochet, and into the third, a slip stitch and tie off and repeat that for each color. All right, now we've got all the ends woven in. So for this one, for a hanging little knob, you could either just sew on a little uh, loop of fabric. I wanted to go ahead and do kind of like a tassel, just make it a little bit more festive. So I'm taking one of my colors and cut a length. I have two pieces of cardboard, five inches by four inches and cut a small length of uh, one color. I'm gonna go with the sea breeze and place that between the two pieces of cardboard. Now I'm going to take all four of my yarn colors and I'm going to start with them down. I'm gonna wrap them around just a couple times. All right. And then go ahead and cut them off. Now take your two ends that were sandwiched between the cardboard, pull it up. and tie it off with a square knot. Make sure that's good and tight. So 
slide your yarn off. Now, want to pick another color. I'm gonna go with my hot pink. And right below the knot, go ahead, I'm just gonna weave the end down towards the bottom here. And we're just gonna wanna loop around with about half inch of the very top and just loop it around a couple of times. Make sure to pull it nice and tight as you're going around. Then be sure to leave a nice long tail onto there. Grab your darning needle. Thread the end of the tail into the darning needle. And then we just wanna secure that end of our little tassel and simply go through the knot. And you just wanna go back and forth a couple of times just to make sure it's secure. All right, then I'm just gonna go down and work the rest of that tail into the tassel. All right, then go ahead, cut the bottoms loops of your tassel. You can go ahead and trim up the ends if you'd like to make them all a similar length. I think the not being all symmetrical adds a little more character to the piece, but everyone has their own opinion. It's also, you can leave it without uh, anything onto there or you can go ahead and tie something on. Now, to attach, simple, easy, put your hook into one of the stitches. I'm going to add it to the sea breeze color. So it just creates a little loop. And you don't wanna pull it super tight because you want this to be able to hang. You know, hang it onto a hook, hang it on the wall or something. I love using vertical space, so I love having little hooks hanging everything right off the wall makes things a lot easier for me. Go ahead and just put a couple little knots onto there. Trim your ends. And you are all done. Fun little festive, you know, spring, Easter coming up. Now you don't have to go with these exact colors. By all means, create something however you'd like to do. Um, whatever your color you're chosen. Um, so you don't have to be specific to these, but have some fun with it. And yes, I would love to, if you've made it, by all means, share a photo with me. Um, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to go ahead and hit the little like button. And if you'd enjoy seeing more patterns, go ahead and click the subscribe button. Thank you so much for stopping by. Have a wonderful day.